Well, welcome back to Hope Harbor Zoo, everyone. Hope you guys are all excited for our first speed build in a while. Uh, I don't think I remember the last speed build that we actually did in this damn zoo, but you know what? It's finally time that we actually get to work on another. So today we are building for our emu, which let me just double check on that. I want to make sure I say who it's from, but this is going in our islands of color area. Uh, so that's going to be very fun. So if I just search in here in NA event log, <laughs> look up hope should be able to find it but essentially we are building in the islands of color area continuing our oceania section uh so right over here we have our swamp wallabies we have our bennett's wallabies and now we will have our kangaroo not kangaroos i want kangaroos no we are working on the emus and in the back we also have a brush-tailed batong otherwise known as a woolly so that actually came to us from g-rex of uh billabong zoo so that was a really fun really really fun animal to get in there uh really hoping to build up my marsupial collection so i could get wombats relatively soon uh i have a few trades lined up for them it's just a matter of getting the experience with them in case if you guys are unfamiliar with zsu they kind of abide by real world standards for the most part so a lot of the times if you're hoping to get an animal you got to have the proper experience behind it first so let's just say for example i want uh yeah let's just say wombats i gotta have uh marsupial experience particularly no nocturnal marsupial experience uh, or nocturnal animal experience there's a lot of ways that you could kind of phrase it and work with staff to kind of get your animals that you want but in the end it all really comes down to you gotta make sure that you cover all your bases when all is said and done uh, so for our islands area, I have a wide variety of different themings that I have going on over here. One of my favorite things for Island of Color is the prevalence of rainbows. So I always thought these were super fun to integrate over here. So I have a few of these kind of rainbow motifs going on throughout here. I have one on the building and I also have some for the railings, which you'll see towards the end of the speed build. It took me a little bit. Uh, big shout out to Ben's Animal Park. He was a zoo that I actually traded with to get this emu. So you you guys should go check out his press room uh but no that's really it so you can see i'm starting to use all the faux rock blueprints that i made before just trying to utilize all the ones that i can to make this habitat as interesting as possible and yeah our emu is just pretty much walking throughout the entire thing through the entire speed build so i think it's really fun just to watch him do that uh, i also utilize these fences that i made beforehand really do love these fence styles uh, it's very much based off of roger williams park zoo's kind of uh world of adaptations area which essentially serves as australasia for roger williams i always think that it's always the coolest collection that we have there because it's just so cool with like all the theming all the animals i don't know i'm just very lucky to grow up near zoo near there so yeah i'm essentially carrying on this theming of these fences always making sure that you know they're aligned to the surface properly and then i also got to work on custom curbing this is what stopped me from really getting this video out sooner uh custom curbing while it is very much worth it it's it's also not worth it <laughs> i absolutely hate doing it now like there's no way that i can enjoy doing this anymore because it's just so tedious to do especially when you're working with you see all these curves you see all these height variations in this habitat yeah it's not good it's not good for this at all uh so i essentially kind of put it off by doing other work around the habitat so i start doing foliage work i start doing rock work just making sure i know where i want all my bases covered in terms of all that stuff so i don't know i just really enjoy doing that kind of stuff so you might see in between like you know shots over here i do fill out some of those curbs that's just because i don't want to bore you guys with doing custom curbing in my speed builds i always feel like that just drags on the video for too much so so I hope you guys can forgive me for that. But what I don't like to not include in here is foliage work. Uh, a lot of my process really stems from placing down foliage where I want it to be and sinking it down just a little bit just as a way to let the terrain paint speak for themselves a little bit. If you simply go over a habitat and really just cover up all those terrain paints you're losing out on so much detail in planet zoo you got some really interesting colors com combinations between colors really awesome textures that 
really just get looked over upon when you kind of like cover those things up. So I really do like uh, kind of taking that kind of stuff into account. Also working on our little bit of a holding area for our emu back there. Uh, eventually I would like to get kangaroos in here, whether they're eastern greys or whether they're red kangaroos. Preferably I would like reds because they're a lot more iconic. But that's what I do over there. And what I'm doing right now is working on the actual fencing. This is easily my favorite part of Island of Color. And I hope you guys appreciate all the detail that goes into this too. Because it's so worth it just to do this custom fencing. I don't know. It's just super fun just to be able to get that rainbow of colors. Because it looks so freaking good in the end. I don't know. I just can't explain it. So, I have a few different things in here. I have that long section right there, uh, and I also have these little um, lookout points, which I really do love. Like, those are just such fun, awesome pieces to use over there. I know, I just really do make... I, I really do love making stuff like that. It's super fun. Uh, maybe I should actually release Island of Color, like, blueprints as a blueprint for the workshop. I think that might be super fun to do. Uh, but you can see my process over here is just copying the colors from before because Leaf made an oopsie. He actually um, uh, didn't use the uh, colors on like that hue picker. He actually made custom colors for each and every single beam. Uh, so you can see I'm going throughout here and kind of selecting one from the before section with the wallabies and stuff and moving them over one and uh, kind of continuing that pattern on the other side. It's very tedious, it took a little bit of time, but it was super worth it in the end. Because look at how this is already stacking up. I just love the continuation of colors throughout here, it just feels so nice, so organic, and I don't know, it just is super nice. So in terms of where else I want to take Hope Harbor Zoo's um, kind of Island of Color section, Sumatra is pretty much done. Uh, in terms of all my animals are on display. All my animals are on display. Everything's all set. Uh, but in terms of what I want out of this section, I uh, definitely want wombats. Koalas would be a headliner animal for me. I really do want to aim for them, uh, but I understand that those won't be ready for a while. Kiwis would be a really big pick too, uh, just because, I don't know, I, I really want to accentuate how Island of Color is the best part of Hope Harbor Zoo. Like, it's the part that I feel so strongly towards. Uh, in terms of everything else, I'm not really sure dingoes would be kind of cool eventually. Uh, I'm not really sure where I would have the space for them because I'm kind of running low on Oceania space. So I really got to be conservative with my choices in there. But of course, I have the big, big building over there uh, for whenever I do want to build for them. But also adding that little holding area for our wallabies as well because I never had one. But yeah, I'm not really sure. In terms of Sumatra, we'll actually talk about that once we actually do get to that section. Uh, I will have the Siamink be built out after this one, I believe. Uh, I'll actually make sure of that. And also, I forgot that the Outback Pack existed. So I'm making this entire damn habitat and I'm like, huh, I really wish I had a lot more Australian pieces. And of course, Nick and I made them. <laughs> so I completely forgot about those. So that's kind of funny right over there. So yeah, I add a few pieces throughout here, a few educational pieces as well uh, just trying to make sure that this area feels a little bit more built up uh, of course I have that little path going out there towards the right that doesn't really have anything in it right now eventually I would like to build over there for something I'm not really sure what as of yet but I'll probably definitely build over there for some Oceania animals I don't really know I'm excited for it I'm excited for the prospect of the future of Hope Harbor Zoo I'm working on a few trades right now uh, in terms of trying to get some more species, especially for North America, because being like a North American zoo, I don't have any North American animals. So I really do want to bump up those populations on Hope Harbor Zoo and really just help to build up those sections. But that is it, my friends, for the entire speed build. I want to thank you all for stopping by. If you guys have any other ideas for Hope Harbor Zoo, let me know in the comments down below because I'm super excited to get back into this series. Uh, and you guys can probably tell from like the energy that I'm bringing to this. I don't know. I'm super happy about it. Thank you all so much once again for stopping by. Really do appreciate it. And I can't wait to see you all in the next episode of Hope Harbor Zoo. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Goodbye now.